So hopefully you checked out some of that. This is a really kind of uh, powerful movie, and you can just kind of like skip and jump around it. But Eisenstein, the director, he's famous for uh, all sorts of things, but his contributions to cinema are, you know, uh, really heralded because he was really introducing these very dramatic angles that that one scene around 10 and a half minutes where Lennon has the flag waving behind him, you know, kind of reminiscent of the standard bearer with Hitler, but it, uh, but from much earlier, actually, um, super dramatic, but Eisenstein also creates the montage, the sequence of images that are paired together that aren't necessarily linked, but when you put them together, they create a more cohesive message. The montage itself, it's supposed to be coherent in message, but dissimilar in imagery. And then it lets the viewer's brain become more active in developing the connections and interpretations. So really cool stuff. Uh, just kind of hop, skip around that if you haven't done that already. Um, wonderful vision of uh, how they uh, perceived capitalism. Here we have kind of the American fat cat capitalist. Uh, smoggy smokestacks in the back. Fat, disgusting, sitting on a, a pile, a bed of money. Uh, only growing richer and richer. And, of course, you're going to see anti-capitalist uh, propaganda coming out of Russia. Again, we're seeing kind of the name-calling going on here. Uh, but kind of a, an interesting poster. And you see that this is kind of their depiction of Americans and their version of capitalism. So let's move on to the big contributions of Russia art, Russian art and uh, Russian propaganda. So let's take a, a break here and check out this movie, this little clip on white on white and Casimir Malevich and uh, suprematism. Pause this lecture now and watch the video. And we're back. So I know that that movie probably um, rubs some of you the wrong way, that you, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. It probably challenges your view of what uh, art is. And, you know, part of that is just the suprematist manifesto that they think that this is honest, focusing on geometric shape, the flatness of the canvas. It's not this lie of pictorial realism. This is art for the sake of creating art, creating something beautiful, creating something simple, elegant, without any of the pretense of realism or any hidden message. Instead, it's just glorious design. Now you're going to see that this same idea of simple designs and geometric uh, layouts really kind of turn into something a little bit mm, well it gets kind of co-opted by uh, the communists and it becomes constructivism and constructivism has a lot of the same elements of suprematism but instead of it being this pure art form it becomes something uh that has a social purpose 
And you're seeing these designs kind of transform into a tool for the government to kind of be this, be both this proud Russian, purely Russian um, art form like suprematism, because nobody was doing suprematism, right? I mean, you look at this, it's, yeah, it's kind of an outshoot of cubism. It's kind of an outshoot of futurism, but it is purely Russian and it becomes part of the Russian avant-garde identity, that it becomes part of the Russian culture. And they then use that to turn into this propaganda method to build into something that, um, you know, turns, it, it, it becomes this way to communicate the strength of Russia, like what we're seeing here, you know, the, the attacking from the air with the, the, uh, the, the Zeppelins and the, the might of the Russian army here, uh, that, but we also see these posters, let us fulfill the plan of great projects working all towards, you see all the hands working together to build one hand unified as a Russian people. This one of Lenin speaking to the oppressed peoples of the world that he has the better uh, way of life, right? That his way is the best way to approach uh, society. And you see so much of the suprematist design paired with the photo montage, paired with collage, paired with the written word, that this becomes this wonderful and beautiful Russian um, way of getting the message out to the masses, which stays intact until Stalin. And at first Stalin was like all, all for it. You know, he, it was the Russian identity, but then he began to move away from it and become and create things that are more like social realism that, um, show realistic paintings that boost the state and boost the identity of Stalin as the father figure, as the noble leader, as the, you know, showing that the, the Russian people are all united and showing these um, ideals that you were promoted with constructivism through a more visual narrative language and using the more realistic means that we see all throughout the rest of Stalin's reign.